So we just played the candy count game, Dave. What can people learn about variation through this game? Great. So, you know, this game is really interesting uh, because it makes a major point uh, pretty simplistically. So when you're looking at the run chart and after you've called out all your M&Ms, um, you see these dots that are varying. Um, uh, you know, they there may be, you know, 12 or 13 or 14 going up and down, and, and they seem pretty random, right? They, they, as you're looking at them, they don't look like they were in any kind of pattern. It's just, but they're all hovering around the same uh, range of numbers. So this is random variation. Uh, it's common cause variation, and it basically comes from M&Ms uh, being packaged by weight uh, versus by count. And so there's naturally going to be uh, a varying number of, of M&Ms in each packet. Um, you know, varying by a, a couple, uh, two or three M&Ms each time. And that's common cause variation. Now, if it worked, you'll also see a couple of uh, dots that are outside of that range, right? These are outliers or, or um, special cause variation. And that's because your uh, facilitator slipped in a different pack of M&Ms. So, right, so maybe the uh, most of you were measuring the um, uh, chocolate M&Ms that have a certain amount, and then uh, you had a, a, a snuck-in pack of, of the peanut M&Ms, and those um, are packed by weight as well, but they're bigger and heavier, so there's fewer of them, and that's a special cause. It's a different process or a different system that was identified because the data was out, outside of the common cause variation that you saw. So how do the lessons from the candy count game apply to real work? All right. All right. So when you're starting an improvement project or you're trying to improve something in your workplace, you know, one of the things that we encourage you to try to do is to start to track data um, and to look at data so you can have a sense of what is the normal variation of the process you're trying to improve. Uh, and this is important to help you figure out what to do. Uh, and so you want to start with a process that's stable and that has common cause variation. If there are special causes, we want to try to figure out what those are and, uh, and identify them or remove them uh, from the process before we begin working on the process itself. One example that comes to mind, I remember um, a few years ago, I was working in England with uh, pharmacists uh, that were trying to figure out uh, how to improve um, the process of doing uh, medication reconciliation. And as we were looking at the data and we we're sitting together, we realized that um, the data uh, going along was, uh, you know, had some normal variation from day to day, but then there were these in independent um, uh, spikes um, that were different. Uh, and what we discovered when we br brought people who were knowledgeable about the process and looked at the data is that um, the, the spikes were actually on the weekends, where when we asked, you know, what's different about the weekends, we found there's a different process on the weekends. And so for us, it helped us to figure out that we needed to stratify our data and to think differently because during the week there was one process that produced a very predictable um, uh, you know, level of performance. And then on the weekends there was a different process that was producing a different level of performance. And so by looking at the data over time, we could differentiate um, the, the main process that we were trying to fix from this other process. And we removed that data or the weekends from um, that view so that we could focus in on the day, uh, weekday process. So very similar like when we we're looking at the M&Ms, if you imagine during the week we had the, the system that produced chocolate M&Ms and on the weekend we had the system that produced peanut M&Ms, right? So, so in order um, to, to work on this process, we need to recognize we've got two different systems going on and we may need to break those out and measure them separately um, so that we can understand how do we make this process work during the week and how do we make this process work on the weekends and, and see uh, the improvement in both cases. One of the challenges uh, that we find is that a lot of people will start doing improvement without thinking about measurement, and without um, measuring the process that they're trying to improve. And so in many ways, it's really hard to differentiate what's common cause and, and normal uh, random variation within a process and what's special. And, and where this becomes critical is you don't want to act um, on events as if they are common cause when they're actually a unique special cause event and you don't um, want to act um, on uh, common cause events as if they were special. So, so being able to see your data over time and differentiate what's normal random part of the process and what's an attributable special cause is important for you to then be able to figure out how to act on that improvement.